Hello, my name is Dan Richardson. Welcome to the Dan Richardson Show. This is episode 45, I think. I'm back to thinking. I'm, I'm back to guessing, but this is episode 45. I'm pretty confident. And uh, I'm going to be talking about Dunkirk today. Um, Dunkirk, of course, is the 2017 movie that was directed by uh, Christopher Nolan. Stars the guy who played um, Scarecrow in the, uh, you know, the Batman, the, the Dark Knight trilogy. Um, it also has the guy who plays the Russian spy in Bridge of Spies. And... Um, it has uh, Tom Hardy in it, and it has this guy uh, playing somebody named Tommy. And Tommy is sort of our point of view character. He's the character on the poster, <clears throat> or on the cover of the movie, as you can plainly see. And yeah, it's pretty fun. Um, this is a good movie. Uh, and I'm going to be talking about it today. Um, I waited um, just a little bit. I waited a little bit longer to uh, review this one just so I could figure out the timeline. Because I, I watched it last night, but I was like, okay, well, how does the timeline work? Um, so this is going to be a minor spoiler review. This movie has been out for uh, two or maybe three years now. So spoilers are sort of... Who really cares about spoilers? But I'll keep it basically minor spoilery so basically um this film has a time scale of like you have the mole which is what the beach is called the actual beach of um dunkirk that the soldiers are on uh that takes place uh it says the mole one week that basically means that the whole that whole section of the film takes place apparently in one week. Um, you see bits and pieces of a week on the beach of Dunkirk. And then when the boats go off and the dad goes off um, to uh, in their civilian boat to um, save the troops of Dunkirk or who are in Dunkirk, they... Um, uh, th their story basically takes a, a long a day, and then Tom Hardy, who is the um, is a pilot, an airplane pilot, he's flying around and stuff, and he has a very limited amount of um, uh, actual gas. You know, he he's always watching um his um you know the oil that is in his uh, plane's engine. And stuff so he ends up sort of uh, and his story takes place along an hour so that's sort of what that means is um and I thought it was like okay one week until which it actually kind of does but I always thought it meant like one week until the actual battle ends or one week until uh, and then one day until the battle ends. One hour until the battle ends. That's kind of what I thought it was. That's what I thought the time scale was. Which, I'm not wrong. But it is a little confusing. And it's one of those things is like, if you care enough to actually Google it or look it up or watch that two minute um, IGN video where Christopher Nolan actually just basically explains <clears throat> what the timeline is. Um, just hear it directly from the man himself, then it's out there for you. Um, I do recommend that uh, IGN video uh, because it's just like a two minute long thing. Um, and it's literally an interview where Christopher Nolan explains the whole idea of what, of what the timeline is supposed to be, which is pretty fun. Um, so basically, Dunkirk... Um, the uh, city is in France. This is uh, uh, this takes place in uh, World War II. Uh, if you watched that movie, uh, The Darkest Hour, with Gary Oldman, that came out in 2017, 
Um, it's about uh, Winston Churchill. He was the British Prime Minister uh, during World War II. He, his speech that he gives at the end of that movie ties in with this movie because, and that's just actually pretty cool. But basically, uh, Dunkirk is um, a um, is a little French town that uh, is set on the channel between um, Britain uh, and uh, France. And uh, basically, what Winston Churchill sort of decided to do was, well, we're going to have civilians, British, uh, normal British people, go on their boats and save. And it's a mixture of actual British officers who take civilian vessels and go across and normal civilians who take their vessels and go across. And they go across that channel that's in between France and England. And there's go one direction and they're going to take the soldiers and bring them back um and uh, you kind of get the sense that it's that the uh, type of soldier doesn't really matter because like they're gonna do one day of uh get england then go back and get france and um the, they basically run, run and rush or we see the soldiers rushing to get on their their respective boats and the uh, and Tommy, who is the kid on the poster, which they never say his name. I actually had to look up his name. Tommy, he, um, uh, every boat he gets on kind of sinks immediately. And it's just kind of, just like that, it's just like Tommy can't catch a break. But it's sort of fun. And it is an interesting, like once you, like it's a pretty, it's a fairly good movie. I do recommend it. But because, and the time scale really shouldn't matter, or like the, the timeline, the sequence of events really shouldn't matter, but it does sort of, I think, hold the movie down just a little bit. Um, to where it, it is a good movie, I do quite like it. The music is pretty well done. Um, it's done by Hans Zimmerman, and Hans Zimmerman is a really good composer. Um, I, I do like him a lot. And you know, it's just sort of something you notice is that, is that it's sort of a little confusing because the Scarecrow guy, you know, gets picked up by the Bridge of Spies guy and he, and uh, you know, he's there and you see him get picked up before, you see him get picked up before the, um, uh, then, like, the very next scene, um, you see, um, uh, him stop Tommy and one of his other, and one of the other people who goes along with him, or who sort of groups with him, because there's, um, Gibson, who is sort of a more who's a wee bit more of a quiet character who kind of pals well, who kind of pals around with Tommy, but ends up, uh, and they sort of have like, they sort of grow a friendship that isn't like, like, like a friendship, but they sort of um, stick together because they're, you know, they're two soldiers in this war are in this battle, you know, and they have to sort of like, uh, and they sort of like watch each other's backs and you see them do things together throughout the film and it's quite nice. Uh, Kenneth Branagh is in this film. This is uh, the year that he did the magnificent um, Murder on the Express, but um, it's nice to see that he also got to do a movie where he didn't have to wear that mustache. And it's really cool and he's supposed to be in that in the new Christopher Nolan movie, uh, Tenant, I believe, which is just kind of fun. And of course, Tenant, uh, that's what it's called, right? Tenant. Uh, Tenant is uh, supposed to be coming out like at the end of July. So depending on when you see this, 
uh, that movie will have already come out or it will still be coming out because it's the 20th of July right now as I'm recording this. Uh, so yeah, there you go. And this is a pretty good movie. It's recommended. Um, I like it. Um, it's actually fairly short. It's just 108 minutes long, which I was surprised by because Christopher Nolan movies are long. <laughs> or at least the ones that I've seen. Because I've only seen now four. Uh, I've seen the Dark Knight Trilogy and I've seen um, Dunkirk. And Inception um, just happily walked off of Netflix before I uh, could see it. You know? Priorities, you know? So yeah, there you go. Um, but tell me, uh, did you see this movie? Did you enjoy it? Did you like it? Do you agree with me that certain parts of it are so-so? Um, I try not to get too spoilery um, because I do want you to check it out, but just know that there are some interesting little um, there's some structure, there's some interesting structure to it. And I actually, I just thought of this, because this does have a bonus disc in it. It's actually funny. Um, I'm going to show you this right now. Um, I got, digital copy is no longer useful, but I got like the, you know, uh, what's it called? I got the, uh, uh, digital uh, um, you know the blu-ray combo pack thing and uh but i didn't realize it but i got the dvd right here uh and i knew about the dvd and i knew that or i kind of realized that i got blu-ray dvd when i originally opened it and this is uh you know the blu-ray but when i took the blu-ray out i realized that there was a bonus disc which i didn't know about so I'll watch the bonus features at some point eventually. But something I just thought of because something I've heard about Memento is, uh, which is not his first movie. I think it's Christopher Nolan's second movie, but it's like one of his first, like, it's like his first uh, mainstream movie right before he did uh, Insomnia. Um, he, uh, I know that one of the bonus features are I've heard that one of the bonus features is that is the movie my Memento done in chronological order. So you get all the black black and white scenes before you get all the all the um before you get all the color scenes. I know that that's a thing in uh, the bonus features, which is just sort of funny. But yeah, so there you go. Um, remember, God made you special. He loves you very much. Have a very safe day. Make sure that you wash your hands and just be safe in general. This is Dan Sign out. Bye.